Welcome back to Ashes Reality Recaps. This is American Idol 56, narrowed down to the top 24. Now, of the 56 contestants that were on last night's episode, only 33 were spotlighted or highlighted, however you want to look at it. But that being said, that's 33 out of 56. That leaves 23 contestants that we knew nothing about. 23 contestants that we don't know their background, we didn't know their singing style, we didn't know their voice, their tempo, none of that. The show basically just wiped them clean, which in my opinion makes me feel like they probably never should have been part of the show in the first place if the show couldn't even take five minutes to introduce them to the audience. Which shows you, and ties back into what I said last night, that production has already chosen ahead of time who's going to go through step by step, who they're going to focus on in the cameras, and who's going to get those spotlights. So. If that's the case, why are we allowing so many people to get onto the show that are never going to get the time of day? There's obviously reasons behind it because we got to be able to say, oh, we're cutting 80 some people or we're breaking down from 56 to 24. Look, at the end of the day, last night's cut was from 33 to 24. They cut, what? Well, they cut nine people last night of who they showcased. And the other 23 were just throwaways as far as anybody was concerned at that point. They were just people in the audience. But anyhow... I'm getting off on a tangent there. The episode last night was, was pretty good. It's the show Showstoppers episode. It's basically where each one of the contestants gets to get up in front of, in front of a live studio audience or a live audience, which I put it in quotation marks because you got to understand this is filmed, you know, months ago this filming was underway. Uh, anybody that was out in that audience is either extras or they're hired to be there or they've signed some kind of agreement that they can't go talk about what goes on there. So it's not truly, you know... An audience based on reality or an audience based on individuals that are out there like, sweet, I'm going to enjoy some music. It's individuals that are put in the crowd with very specific rules and regulations on what they're allowed to do. I mean, if you watch some of the songs where they start waving back and forth like this, uh, that's all very scripted and choreographed. They're basically told to do that. It's very awkward in some of the songs where it doesn't really fit, but they do it anyhow, and you sit at home and, wow, what, what are they doing? It doesn't really fit into this song, but hey... That's the way that production wants to run it. They have those individuals out there. Wherever they get them from, I have no idea. If you've ever been an extra on American Idol and you got to stand out in the audience and wave back and forth, hey, let us know where that comes from and how you get to be part of that. But anyhow, uh, throughout the episode last night, pretty good, pretty good talents. Again, I feel production did a really good job of pushing forward the top 24 that they've already kind of you know thrust into our face and said that this is who we're going to focus on. So the top 24 that we have have all been focuses at some point, whether through the auditions or during you know the first night of Hollywood week where they broke down to 56 and again last night. And again, the nine that you know went home last night that we called uh, showcases or however you want to look at it, Again, not a big loss there. I think the biggest one out of that that stuck out for me was Ziggy. Now, Ziggy is incredibly talented, but Ziggy kind of ties into uh, my focus of like how Madai was, where Ziggy is incredibly talented, but the songs that Ziggy wanted to sing, Ziggy went out there and said, hey, this is me, which is fine. But for American Idol, I feel like production's looking for somebody that's going to be a talent that they can mold and shift and push down a specific tunnel or a path. And, and Ziggy obviously has, you know, Ziggy's mentality of where Ziggy wants to go with Ziggy's career. So didn't really fit into the American Idol mold of what they was looking for. So they went ahead and sent Ziggy home. Ziggy did have to have a sing-off with uh, Mackenzie Soul. Um, they both sang fantastic. Mackenzie did a fantastic job with the song that they had to sing with the 22 of them. And he beat out Ziggy last night so unfortunately Ziggy went home but I have a feeling Ziggy's gonna make a pretty good career uh, of their self just because they're gonna make a ton of connections being on the show again uh, again it was on American Idol in a foreign country so being back on the show again just gonna benefit Ziggy from that point forward the other one I want to talk about is uh, the one they refer to is KB uh, she also goes by let me look at this so I don't you know butcher this name or anything like that so KB Richens and Alyssa Ragu. So KB went through. So the other sing off I want to talk about was between KB and Alyssa Ragu. Now for some reason Alyssa Ragu is not on this list of nine that they sent home. They did a pretty good job focusing on her. I think because she was never supposed to be on American Idol, uh, Katie kind of called her out for really just stepping on her friend's toes and kind of barging into the audition and being like, hey, look at me. I was here twice. I'm going to sing again. Give me an opportunity. Uh, you know, Katie was right. You've, you've had your opportunity. I don't think you're going to win. I'm not going to send you through. However, you know, Lionel and Luke went ahead and sent her through. 
she made it into the top 56, but just her performance against her performance last night overall wasn't stellar. They went ahead and put her up on a one-on-one against KB. I think production-wise that they did this because they knew KB has that talent and they wanted to say, okay, we're going to put KB in a situation where it's stress-inducing. Like KB knows that Alyssa Ragu is a singer, so let's put her in it. Let's see if she can handle that kind of stress. And if she ste- steps up and sings, and she knocked it out of the park, like absolutely crushed it. Now for Alyssa Ragu, again, it was one of them ones where it was a good, it was a good, you know, It was a good song. She did really good singing the song. And I think the judges hit it on the head where they basically said, look, you're going to have a career in music. You have a future. You have a fan base already. You don't need American Idol to get there. So we're going to go ahead and send you home. Again, that being said, they knew this from the beginning. Everybody knew this from the beginning. She never should have been part of the show in the first place. Again, she's had her opportunities, but they went ahead and gave her a chance anyhow, and she got sent home for it, where somebody else that probably shouldn't have been sent home or somebody else that could have been highlighted in these episodes could have had some screen time, and we might have a different top 24, but we don't. That's the top 24 that they came up with. You know, Again, I think production, I'll give them, I'll give them applause, I think production did a pretty good job with the top 24 of the uh, participants that they showed us. Uh, I just wish we had a chance to actually meet all of the contestants that made it into the top 56 so that we could, as you know, participants, judge on who we felt would be the next American Idol. But anyhow, we're spoon-fed these top 24. So as we're spoon-fed these top 24, we will tune in next week to the Hawaii uh, episode and see who makes it through Hawaii. And that is Ash's Reality Recap American Idol Top 24. See you next week.